Hey guys, so we've been cooped in our house for about two weeks now and I'm going a little stir crazy and so is the rest of my family. So I thought today we could be doing some math but doing it with a little bit of movement as well. So I've recruited some people to help me get some numbers so that we can do our charts and we can get some math done. So let's go. You need to know how to do a squat so that way you don't hurt yourself if you're trying these at home. So when you do a squat, your feet are about hip width apart, and then you're going to squat. But you don't squat like this, where your knees come out over your toes. You want to squat where you're kind of sitting in a chair. So you're going to go back, and your toes should be able to wiggle. So you squat down, and you go right about here, wiggle your toes, make sure that you have them, and then you come back up. That's one rep of squats. So you go down, like you're sitting in a chair, wiggle your toes, make sure that you can still do it, keep your feet planted, and then come back up. and your hands to your sides. When you do the jumping jack, at the same time, you'll spread your legs across, or apart, not across, and then you're gonna bring your arms up to where they almost touch or they're actually touching. You're gonna do that at the same time. Then you come back, you bring your arms back, and you bring your feet back together. That's one rep. So when I'm doing a jumping jack, I go one, two, Now that we are all completely tired, we're going to be doing some math with our numbers. So the first thing that I want to show you how to do is take this chart and turn it into a bar graph. So if you look, I've already made the bar graph and I want to show you a couple things about this bar graph. First, the x-axis right here, that's the people that were doing the exercise. And there's a label right here because we're going to show both the squats and the jumping jacks. On this y-axis right here, it's the number that we did in a minute. Now I didn't put the numbers yet because I, I didn't know what this was going to look like yet. So now that I see, I'm actually going to count by probably about tens. So we'll go right here and actually what I'm going to do, and this is a little more advanced, so actually maybe what I'll do is I'll count by fives. This is a little more advanced. What you do is you can make a little break like that. And we'll start right here, and our lowest number was 38. So we're gonna start right here and go 30. And we'll say 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, that works out perfectly for us. Okay, so now we'll look at me first. On the squats, I did 39. So I'm gonna make a little bar graph. Now I'm gonna go 30. It's more than 35, but it's less than 40, but just barely less than 40. So I go up and I draw my bar graph. Now down here, I have what's called a key. So I'm going to draw these lines diagonally. And what this means, I'm gonna draw a box, I'm gonna draw diagonal lines. If you see the diagonal line, lines, that means that we were doing squats, okay? For my jumping jacks, I did 86. So I'm going to draw another one right next to it, draw up all the way above 85, but just barely above 85 because I got 86. And I draw it down like that. And this one, I'm going to just kind of shade in. So in my key, I'm going to shade in like that. That means jumping jacks. Part of having a graph is for people to be able to see the data really easily. So you don't have to try and analyze these numbers. When we're looking at the graph, it makes it really obvious who had the most, who had the least, things like that. So Anya had 38. She was just right below me. So I go right about here. And those were squats. 
And then she beat me on the jumping jacks. How dare she? So we get all the way up and she's gonna be just slightly above mine, right here. And then we shade it up, okay? Moira had 48, so I have to go 30, 35, 40, 45. 40 is more than 45, but it's less than 50. And it's almost right in the middle. So I'm gonna draw my line so it just barely meets. And those were squats, so we go diagonal. And her jumping jacks were 86. She was the same as me. So her line should be right at the same angle. Oh, I gotta stand up so I can make sure I have the right angle. As mine. And then we shade it up. Okay? You can tell already that we did way more jumping jacks than we did squats. Now, Lily had 50 squats. She would be right on that 50 line. So I draw it up, here's 50, bring it across, so right there, those are squats. And then her jumping jacks, she had 81, so just above 80, which means she's going to be right about here. So we draw it up, over, down, and then shade it up, okay? Now Lachlan had 37 squats. So he's gonna be right about here. And he's gonna go up and be just less than Ani and I. And then his jumping jacks, he had 61. So here's 60, just right above 60 at 61. That's him right here. And then we shade it up. Now, my husband, or their dad, had 52 squats. So we go up right above 50. Just barely, shoo, bring it across. And that was his squats. And he had 83 jumping jacks, we find 80, go right about halfway. And we're at 83 jumping jacks. Shade it up. So, as you can see, we have a label for all of the people. We have the number we did in a minute. We have a key that tells us with what these bars mean, and now we can analyze. So if you look over here, I want to do a little bit of comparison. I want to analyze what these numbers mean. So over here it says most squats, least squats. I want to figure out how many more squats the most was compared to the least. And when I say how many more, that tells me we're going to be subtracting. So we're finding the difference. So over here, this minus this will give us the difference. So when I look, well the most squats, that was 52, that was dad, he had 52 squats. And the least, that was 37, that was Lachlan. So 52 minus 37. Now if you don't know how to do it, just in your brain like that, turn it to standard algorithm Put one on top of the other, 52, 37. Well, seven can't go into two if they, there's not enough. If I have two apples and I have to divide it into seven friends, there's not enough. I would have to start dividing into fractions, which we don't want to do. So we're going to borrow a 10 from the five. So that five becomes a four. Now there's four tens instead of five tens. And that two now becomes 12 because we borrowed one 10. 12 minus 7 is 5, 4 minus 3 is 1. So the difference between the most squats and the least was 15 squats. Now I did the same right here, and remember when I said when we're comparing and finding the difference, that means we are subtracting. So let's take a look. I can use this or I can use this chart. The chart might be easier right now. Most jumping jacks, so jumping jacks, 86, 87, 86, 81. 61, oh, nope, dad beat us again with, oh, wait, no, he didn't, I'm just joking. Anya beat us, I think. Oh my gosh, Anya beat us with 87 jumping jacks. And the least was Lachlan with 61. So again, if you can't do the math like this, turn it into standard algorithm. We'll go 87 minus 61. Seven minus one is six. 
eight minus six is two. So the difference is 26. Now, we should always label. 15 doesn't mean anything. But when I say 15 squats, now we know what, we're, what we mean by 15, which means 26 jumping jacks. Okay? Now I wanted to do something a little a little fun. Let's assume that we're all superheroes and could keep that pace for an entire hour. We did it for a minute. I want to see how many jumping jacks, how many squats we could do in one hour if we kept going at the same rate. So let's see. I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take Lily's 50 squats. Now to find out how many squats she could do in an hour, we have to think a little bit. There are 60 minutes in one hour. We just did this for one minute, which means for each minute, she did 50 squats. So I would go 50, 100, 150. I could count like that 60 times, or I could just do 50 times 60 minutes. Cause I know in each of these 60 minutes, she would have done 50 jumping, or sorry, squats. So 50 times 60, I'll move that over here. Standard algorithm makes it easier. Zero times zero is zero. Zero times five is zero. We add a zero down below because that six is in the tens place. Six times zero is zero. Six times five, that's 30. Then we add them together with some pretty easy math. Put in our comma. So Lily, if she kept going at the rate that she was going with her jumping jacks, she would be able to do 3,000 jumping jacks per hour. That would be amazing. Now, let's try some, oh, I didn't mean jumping jacks, oh my gosh. I mean squats. Squats. It's okay to make mistakes. Celebrate them. Now, now let's do jumping jacks. And I think, hmm, I think I wanna use, I think I'm gonna use Moira's jumping jacks. She had 86, and I'm not using it because she has the same as me. Remember in one hour, 60 minutes in an hour. Now I definitely can't do this in my brain. So I'm gonna go standard algorithm. 86 times 60, zero, zero, put the zero down here because six is in the tens place. Six times six is 36, six times eight, well, if you don't know it, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 48 plus three, 48, 49, 50, 51. Don't be ashamed to use your fingers. They are helpful. So 51. Now we add, put in our comma, one, two, three. So Moira in one hour could do 5,160 jumping jacks. per hour. That would be a lot of jumping jacks. I challenge you, try these exercises. Time yourself for one minute. Time your siblings for one minute and then compare yours. See who has the most. Figure, figure, figure out what the difference is. Figure out what yours is when you add both of your scores together. How many could you do in an hour based on our math that we did just right here? Either way, let me know how it goes and remember to stay curious, keep learning, and I'll see you later.